Ladies and gentlemen, from the studios of the West Coast Funny Car Factory, these are the Nitro Reports for September 2018, brought to you by Aeromotive Fuel Systems at aeromotiveinc.com and Good Vibrations Motorsports with just about every part for your race car at dragparts.com. Racepack Data Systems with digital data loggers for your race car at racepack.com and Stith Printing Legends of Nitro with the new Rookie of the Year program at stithprinting.com and Hot Probes with exhaust gas temperature sensors for your race car at hotprobes.com. Tonight's guests are NHRA Mellow Yellow Funny Car Driver Fast Jack Beckman, 2018 Heritage Series Top Fuel Champ Mendy Fry, Funny Car Driver Sean Bowen, Rookie of the Year Finalist Nancy Matter and Lyle Greenberg, and 2018 Sivka Champ James Mayer. I'm Bruce Barker, and now, here are Donnie Couch and Dar Hawthorne. We made another one, Donnie. Woo! You hey, ready for this one? Oh. Hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> I was getting ready for the Joe Wallace show, but he never called me back. So. Oh. I, you know, I thought I'd perform for, for you tonight, man. Rockin' in Nitro, our new show. Yeah, here's a backing track. Already yeah. 47,000 viewers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've only been on a minute. It's unbelievable. <laughs> that guitar thing really does it, Dar. It's a guitar, really. That's right? it. Right? That's it. <laughs> well, we got a great show lined up tonight, Dar. And, yeah, uh, we got a lot of people, and, and first time we're using Skype to bring Mindy Fry in, yeah, our new newly, world champion. Newly crowned, right? That's it. Hi, Mindy. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Donnie is doffing the guitar. Oh, oh man, I thought he was going to have a solo. I know. Jeez. Later. I'm going to write a there? song. I'm here. What's hey. up, players? Wow, are you in the bathroom? <laughs> yes, I am. I'm naked from the bottom half. Oh, man. So are we. Sitting on the throne. Flush the toilet and prove it. <laughs> <laughs> So you pulled it off, huh? Just you got that uh, that race canceled down in Oklahoma, and uh, all of a sudden you're champion. Yeah, I mean, I found out about it on at Wednesday at 9 a.m. Not exactly the way we wanted to find out. You know, we wanted to uh, kick ass in Tulsa and uh, find out that way. But hey, we'll take it. You so know? you're fist pumping at work. <laughs> People thought I was insane. Like yeah. I started crying. Everybody was like, what is wrong with you? And I just won the championship. And they're like, the what? I mean, I really... My bowling league. <laughs> <laughs> right? Do they know you drive a top fuel dragster? They do. It's something I have to disclose in the interview process because if I give them the, oh, by the way, I'm going to be gone for, you know, X number of weekends a year, uh, <laughs> it, which includes Thursday and Friday. And... Monday, if we do really well, right? <laughs> God, why can't we do that for this show, Dar? <laughs> well, we we basically do. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, darn it! <laughs> Jeez. So you're still gonna run? Uh, you're not gonna sit out the reunion, are you? Hell no, we're not going to that thing to lose either. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that's a given. Except I did notice that that, that Jimmy Young's coming out. Good. He he should be you know in addition to our regular West Coast guys and and uh, and Hilton and and uh, people like that Jimmy Young is is sure a formidable uh, opponent for everybody on the West Coast. Oh, I mean Jimmy brings game, man, and you know that's what this class needs. So bring more of that. Absolutely, everyone is doing. You know, um, Tyler Hilton and uh, and Bobby Hilton they have really stepped up in the this year and I mean they ran they've almost run 250 miles an hour they went 249 uh, against us in in Boise and so they're just there and um, and they have really stepped up their program I mean Dusty Green went to the final and he's running consistently that thing always runs like you know 580s as well as others in the class too so I mean it's it, the class is getting better and better and I think car cuts are going to be up next year from what they are now. So it's all good. That's great because you know it's uh, it it got sad for a while with uh, with top fuel when you could barely get you know eight cars to come. But now the field is so bunched together in terms of of who could possibly win or and you know except for your dominance of course this year. Yeah. <laughs> 
that well, they, uh, I mean that's obviously that's obviously Tom and the team right like Tom who? Before, I just got to make sure I don't screw up <laughs> but, <laughs> um, sometimes do something slightly inspired but typically just don't screw up that's uh, that's my job um, but the team gets it there and it's you know races are one in the shop and we have a we have a maintenance program that's second to none so uh, but hey, look, Bakersfield's not going to be a cakewalk, right? That is when all of the people show up and uh, they're coming down from Canada. They're coming out from Washington, D.C. They're coming out, I mean, from everywhere, right? Jimmy Young's coming, but every all the West Coast cars seem to pull it out, too. So um, hopefully we'll have, you know, 13, 14 cars. Well, now, um, anything different, or is it just more of the same? I mean, is, you know, Tom's pretty much solved a lot of the problems that you have, but he, I know he also works on it about 24-7. Yeah, Tom eats, sleeps, breathes this car, and just because we're, you know, running better than anyone right now doesn't mean that he's going to be complacent with that. The class is going to catch up. Right, it always does. So we have to stay a step ahead of it, and I would not discount what he's got in his back tricks. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's certainly got a lot of talent, and uh, he's proven that for many years in the past. But to win the championship and for you to win it, Mindy, that's uh, pretty awesome. I know the, your sister and your mom got to be really happy, but I know there's a guy looking down on you that's you're very proud of, and. Uh, I'm sure he's got a big smile coming from your dad. Yeah. I wish he was here. You know, he's been gone for uh, 22 years, and I think he would have he would have dug it. Yeah, and uh, and I think he'd be proud. Yeah, <laughs> you started off. We don't. We did not win this without the help of our sponsors either. You know, we've had some really great support from the blower shop, from Cam Two Blue Blood Oil, uh, from Reed Rockers and A and A Precision and. Donovan Engineering, you know, Webster Heads, like all of those people have stood by us for a long time and uh, helped get us here. So, Did you get a special <laughs> present from Cam, too? <laughs> What'd she get, Dar? I, I heard a rumor that there's going to be something pretty blingy, yes. Which, yes. You, which, you, which may adorn you at the, uh, at the uh, World Finals coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to be present to see it. I'm not going to give it up. Yeah, and, and you, know, you're, you have a bodyguard there, too, as well? <laughs> I always have bodyguards. Of course. <laughs> hey, Mindy, Mindy, how cool was it we were watching the NHRA race in St. Louis, and they showed uh, Brittany with her dragster, you know, being a former champ, and then they got your name in there for Nostalgia Top Fuel. I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool is is just not i mean there are no words to describe when cole yelled at me i was in the kitchen <laughs> and he says hey come here i said what 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 is it and all of a sudden there's my name on tv and it was it was pretty incredible yeah yeah for them to recognize that that really validates what you do out there i know it's it's been a long time coming right i've been working hard in this class for a while and just yeah it it's so nice to, for the efforts of the team, for everybody to be recognized like that, but um, for our class too, you know, I mean, our class is bitching. Yeah, and, it is. Uh, and people, you know, it's a fan favorite, and we're going to be doing exhibition runs in Vegas, and they mentioned that on the on the broadcast, and as well as we're going to be at Pomona the weekend after the finals for the um, Hot Rod 70th uh, anniversary in, in in and Out Burger, yes. and watch you know so you can watch Nitro cars go the quarter mile, which is. Uh, doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> no, no, only with our class, right? Yeah. Hey, Mindy. Now, have you guys got together as a team and celebrated yet, or what's? No, we haven't. It's been like the the most lackluster, you know, winning of a championship ever. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's something you could do every day, right? Yeah, right. I mean, Tom and Rick had to drive the car home from Tulsa. They were there when they found out. And uh, everybody else, we haven't assembled yet, so I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, that ought to be a good one because you guys have a pretty big crew and an awesome crew over there led by Tom. And, uh, you know, those celebrations like that are pretty special. 
pretty special. I know, I know. <laughs> and uh, and we're gonna get Cole in at it too. So I, I just, you know, of all the people that I want to thank, I want to thank him for all the support for all the years. I've yeah, been trying. you mean putting up with your shit? Yeah. Putting up with my shit, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mindy, can you, about that. can you, uh, uh, one of the things Cole said earlier when I was talking with him earlier today is that, that, uh, the, the AAFD, uh, drag strip rumble is going to be part of MAV TV mm-hmm. or is part of MAV TV. They are going to be, um, they're going to be on in October. I don't have the exact date, but just check MAV TV for it. Um, but they are starting with the, uh, Bowling Green event is what they're doing. Nice. And you won that so, one. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to air <laughs> a few times. Nice. Well, things are really progressing for that class and for you. And, man, we're really proud of you, Mindy. It was awesome, man. I mean, you got Wit and Cole and you got, you got great photographers. You got Les Mayhew out there doing some stuff. And it's uh, it's it's really a great showcase for our class. Yeah, well, Les Mayhew, man, he could put some video together. We know that. He's, he can. Yeah, he's great. He's great, and it's fun seeing Wit out there. You know, he's uh, in a different position where he's uh, gets a chance to be a little more friendly than he was when he was a driver. <laughs> He actually talks to people. People thought he was such an asshole. I think he's just fine. Yeah. Just don't get I'm, him behind the wheel. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Anything, Last time right? I said that, he wanted to beat me up. Imagine that. I think a lot of people have wanted to beat you up, Donnie. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I know a few people, too. but He stays on this side of the country. I'm mostly. still 35 and 0. So. Just gotta, you just got to carry that guitar. Yeah. Well, Joe Walla Jr., <laughs> he'll he'll be, he'll be up at the reunion too, playing for you. He's got a championship he, song he he's gonna try make for and wear you. Try some of Joe Walla's pants. No, his, hey. Dar has his jo- jacket. His, yeah, I have I have two of his jackets he's given me, and I, I it's hard to find an occasion to wear them. Yeah, it's u- usually a funeral or something like yeah, that. Yeah, gay, gay pride <laughs> parade. <laughs> our celebratory um, our celebratory night. You should wear it. Uh, I'll put it in the truck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you'll have it ready. My First, well, you're going to have to dry clean that thing. Oh, you should check the pockets. No, they're sewn the, shut. You sure? Yeah. Because oh, you get pulled okay. over by the police and they search you. No telling. Maybe but. that's why they're sewn shut. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, officer. I know that Joe Walla played at Pablo Escobar's birthday party. So, I don't know. <laughs> Well, thanks a lot for calling in, Mindy. I really, really, we're all really proud of you. And, you know, we all knew you when, when you were driving a funny car. Ah, oh, thank you so much. It's a, it's a dream come true, really. And I just want to thank my team one more time. I can't, can't say enough about them. Yep, you got a great team. And we appreciate you always taking time out to be on the show, Mindy. And uh, looking forward to seeing you in Vegas and Hot Rod Reunion and everything else. You're getting a lot of accolades and uh, you deserve them. Thank you. No. Don't cry. Are you crying? No, there's no crying in Skype interviews on Nitro Report. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, Dar's got a couple tears. Going. I'm all right. I'll be yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mindy, so much, and we'll be talking to you soon. All right. See you in Bye. a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. Well, great accomplishment, huh, for Mindy and... Yeah, that's big, man. Yeah, now you know when NHRA puts it on their show that it's something. It was something when I saw it. I was like, "Oh man, wait yeah. a minute! They recognize the Heritage Series." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's like they hardly know it exists. Yeah, I know. Do they even know when it runs? Yeah, I sent it. Uh, I included it in a memo I sent recently. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who just sent the memo to man? Nobody talks to you at NHRA. No, and why should they? <laughs> well, speaking no, it should, it should be fun because uh, um, uh, I'm gonna, I'll be covering it for Nitro Reports, but also for uh, uh, for Bank Shift, and Diane Lover is going to be shooting up there as well. And I'll put up uh, you know a gallery of photos every night. Go back to the hotel and put up a big gallery of photos so that uh, everybody can see what's going on. And then I'll be up there on Monday of the, of the event. Uh, for Bucky's uh, nitro Test warm up, engine. yeah, there, it looks like there's seven or eight uh, nitro cars that'll be in there, and and 
uh, Don Nelson and uh, I think Eddie Knox is going to be there and um, um, oh Bucky and and Bobby. Wow. And uh, so it's uh, you know it's pretty cool that uh, you know this is. It's one of those last ditch things where everybody's kind of get, getting their final shit together. Yeah, and, everybody uh, wants to win that race, man. So they're up there wearing their stuff out before the race. Man, I better get Ronnie Swear Engine to call in. We're gonna have, you know, the, the we'll have our next Nitro reports on the Tuesday after that Monday, which is you know just before the reunion right. starts, right? So that we can do a real warm up show. But uh, you know, I'm hoping you know maybe we can get uh, Ronnie Swear Engine on if if uh, you know if if he'll consent. Well, we get all the big stars on this show. That's why we got. Look who we got on now, Jack Beckman. Fast Jack Beckman. Fast Jack. Sorry, Jack. No way. Uh, <laughs> my hero. Seriously, that guy's on. That guy's yeah. on. Wait, you want to take some time away and go watch uh, uh, on on uh, Facebook? <laughs> Dar, did, did I hear you drop the S bomb a couple of minutes ago? Did I literally, literally hear you say that? Probably this, not. This microphone has no well, filter look, on it. <laughs> well, listen, you guys will appreciate this. So, oftentimes, if you get beat first round, <laughs> the Fox broadcasting team will ask you to come up into the announcer's booth mm-hmm. and announce second round of Nitro, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I thought I did a reasonably good job, and then I get an email. And I'd love to read it to you because it's that unbelievable. But basically, when Scott Palmer's body work disintegrated at the top end, I said, I bet that scared the bejesus out of him. The word I used was bejesus. This guy told me there might be eternal penalties to pay using the Lord's name in vain. There's a guy with a keyboard and too much time on his hands. (laughs) And he's an NHRA employee? Oh, no, no, no. This is just somebody... Somebody Did you say that came from Tom Compton? <laughs> <laughs> and yet, Dar drops the S bomb. All's well with the world. Hey, come on! There, we're not. We have no uh, restrictions from the Federal Communications Commission that I know of. <laughs> not yet. Hey, you're you're damn right. <laughs> uh oh. Hey, Jack. I, you know, one of the reasons I called you uh, yesterday was you know I wanted to uh, compliment you on on the way that you uh, you brought up. Uh, um, Robert Height's crash at St. Louis and sort of didn't talk about uh, you know all of the awful aspects but but you you spent the time talking about the Eric Medlin project well I think all of us owe an enormous debt of gratitude to to, you know I tell you what I was remiss I don't think I thanked John Force in there because the Eric Medlin project was funded by John Force Racing. I mean, John Medlin really was the impetus of driving all the safety advantages forward. And, I mean, think about that. That man lost his son in a race car. Right. You know, most of us would have just folded up tent and that would have been it. Forward my mail somewhere else. That man did some things to save some lives moving forward. And Heights was a badass. I mean, that car smacked the wall hard. But And that side padding that we've got in these cars now is a direct result of Eric's accident. It was modified further after Force crashed at Dallas. And it's one of those things like the head and neck protection devices that you could never quantify how many lives it saved because you can't go back and replay the accident without that safety equipment in there. But I'm sure it's not only saved lives, it's let many of us walk out of the cars when we would have been knocked out or had some serious mm-hmm. head injuries. Mm-hmm. Well, one one of the things that I noticed in if, if Bruce, if you can start that video from the beginning again, is that when he hit the wall initially, it it smacked the rear end around and then bounced against the wall, and you can see his head, you know, side to side. And boy, that even if you've got incredible padding in there, that's got to hurt. Well, and we've talked about, you know, we can make them even safer. You could put it so you have to squeeze your helmet mm-hmm. in between those pads but then you wouldn't be able to drive the car. Right. Everything would be blurry. Recognize that most of the times safety is a compromise between what you can afford to do, what you could reasonably do, and what you think will give you a level of protection uh, that, that minimizes the risk enough to the point you're willing to get in the race car. Right. Now, Jack, you've had some bodies, you know, you've been in some big explosions before. When, <laughs> I've heard some parts, Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, as a driver going down through there, and this is going on and the body's ripping off, I mean, what what are you thinking of? I, I know you're trying to stop the car and, and get it off the sure. guardrail. Oh, you no, know, I, I, I totally understand the question. It, it, and what happens is 
it's not like you're driving down the road at 35 and your car steering with your knee, you're in and out burger and, and sipping your drink <laughs> in the other hand, and a uh, cat runs out in front of you. You know what I mean? When you're driving a nitro funny car, you're kind of expecting that on many runs, something's going to go wrong. So when there's that boom, and it's a pretty good-sized concussion in there, when that happens for a split second, it's startling. You do nothing. And then what happens is it's immediately followed by a lot of fire, which kind of sucks. But I'll tell you the thing that's the most terrifying to me is when it shoots oil all over your visor and you can't see. Because <laughs> typically what happens when it blows up is it's like taking a basketball and pushing it down on the ground till it's almost flat and then letting go. It's going to spring up. That explosion tries to shove the car down into the racetrack. It compresses the tires, and then the car bounces off. you got oil all over the tires. It's sliding in it, and you're trying your best not to hit anything, and it's hard to see. Other than that, it's pretty routine. But <laughs> so My thought in there is you're going to get the chutes out. Well, guess what? If the body blew off the car, it automatically deploys the chutes. Next thing, if you're on fire, you're going to shut the fuel off. You're going to put the, the fire bottles on. Next thing is you're going to squeeze the brake, and if that thing's in its oil and it starts sliding, let go, get it over in the middle of the racetrack if you can see, and then try to slow it down. Boy, in Robert's case, he just went right from step one to step seven. When that thing blew up, and guys, I want to clarify this. I have not seen a replay. I took the scooter and I went up to make sure he was going to be okay. I have not seen any of the slow motion stuff. I was standing at the starting line. But let me tell you, he was a passenger. That thing turned left so fast and hit the wall so hard, and I'm sure it broke the steering off the car right away, that at that point he was just along for the ride. Well, I, I did speak with uh, some people at the track, and, and they did see him, uh, Robert, back uh, with John uh, later that evening on Sunday night and said how eerie it was to uh, uh, just have three guys on the uh, winner's stand at, uh, you know, handing out the uh, the uh, Wallys. Cause, uh, you know, it's That's kinda... a different way to, get, to have a winner's circle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he said that uh, that he said that Robert said he was okay. He'd been cleared by the doctors, but uh, that I guess he had to bring a note from the attending physician. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. I, I, yeah, I literally just got a text from him about five or six minutes ago. I just wanted to make sure he was okay, and Good. I'm sure he's pretty sore right now. Yeah. yeah. You know, the amazing thing, too, Jack, is the safety of uh, the fans out there. That body didn't hurt nobody, or, you know, luckily it landed in the right spot between some motorhomes, but nobody else was injured in that deal, which is just incredible. I, I yeah, know they're going to probably have to address that. Yeah, and, and I, Donnie, you would recall this back 20 years ago. In fact, Forces team actually experimented with having something. Uh, if the car was on fire, this is back before we had the good fire suppressing paint on the underside of the body. Yeah. And one of the toughest things about a funny car is if it caught on fire and that body was still on the car, you were in there. Uh, Austin Coyle designed a set of air jacks on the front of the car that would jack the body up and launch it off the car. And then they designed a tether to hold the body behind the car. The problem with a lot of these safety ideas is there's unintended consequences good and bad with them you know if you tether the body to the car it could lead to some other issues there it could pull the car over the wall uh i think that that uh by and large nhra does a phenomenal job of cars that make eleven thousand horsepower they're going 330 miles an hour in less than four seconds and things can go wrong in a hurry that we've minimized the, the, the risk of injury not just to the drivers but maybe more importantly to the fans yeah, that's uh, I mean, we've seen bodies go up into the stands, like a Pomona, I think it was Paisano's car, and you could just see the people, everybody held their hands up and held the body up from, <laughs> from not hurting anybody. That's a hell of a souvenir, isn't it? Right? Yeah. A whole yeah. body, but Sit now your backpack. they're breaking up, you know, so they're really going in half now and two big yeah, pieces. Yeah, Roberts was an odd one in that the body came off it fairly intact, which doesn't happen much anymore. But you know, over the years, like it used to be an issue, spark plugs would literally, mm. we'd blow, the threaded portion of the spark plug would stay in the cylinder head, but the cylinder pressure would blow the, the porcelain and end electrode out just like a bullet, and they'd right. end up in the stands. So now we have uh, steel straps that hinge over the spark plugs to keep them from going up into the stands. We put ballistic blankets over the top of the engine so studs and the superchargers and the injectors don't go flying off and bouncing down the track. And, you know, you can't protect everybody from everything all the time. Life is not bulletproof. 
But drag racing, because we go in a straight line and we have good concrete guard walls on both sides of the tracks, we don't face a lot of the dynamics like the road race cars and the Indy and the NASCARs do where they're turning at speed, and if something goes wrong, there's going to be a hard side impact. Yeah. Yeah, how, you couldn't possibly make a safer barrier in in, in a straight line drag racing. Yeah. You could, but there'd have to be fifteen or twenty different styles. The issue right. with the safer barrier is there's a rebound off of it. Mm-hmm. That rebound is a frequency that's that's tied to the weight of the car and the speed of the car. So it would have to be a different density at a hundred feet than at eleven hundred mm-hmm. feet, and it would have to be a different barrier for a super stock car versus a pro stock bike. And and again, I think it's a case of unintended consequences. You could make it much safer for four of the categories and unbelievably unsafe for two of the categories. You know, one of the things that I think could be worked on is containment devices at the top end. We have a pea gravel trap, used to be Mm. called a sand trap, but now we have great big pea gravel pellets in there, and then a net. And some tracks, Pomona comes to mind, we just physically don't have enough space to put a long enough sand trap down there to do an effective job for a car going 300 miles an hour. Years ago, Dell had an incident at Pomona, and that car literally ended up on the other side of the nets. And if you looked at his computer, he was only going 67 miles an hour when he went into the sand. Mm. So can we do something like a ever-deepening water pool down there that starts at half an inch and goes down to six inches? I mean, we slow down rocket sleds with that. But if you do that, you don't want to drown a pro-stock motorcycle rider. You, you know what I mean? There's yeah. a million different things that you could do, but you got to make sure it's not going to be worse for certain contestants. Well, at Pomona, you could put a bridge over into the golf course. <laughs> that, you know what? That's a, that's a great... Or a Hot Wheels <laughs> loop up there, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, want, I wanted to ask you another thing, Jack. Uh, you know, Earlier this year, there was a lot of uh, moaning and gnashing of teeth about track prep. It's... It, it, Track prep is still remaining the same as NHRA mandated earlier in the year, but all the crew chiefs have gotten it together? No. I'm not so sure about that. Um, What happened was when they made the change, they cut down to, gosh, I don't want to lie to you, was it 65%? of the glue Mm -hmm. instead of 100%. So there's there's four things that go into track prep. There's the pre-event prep where they come out and they scrub the Mm -hmm. racetrack, broom in white rosin, start the tire rotating machines there, and then spray it. That used to be 100% spray. That's been cut down. There's during event maintenance where they go spray the track. How frequently? How many times a day do they do that? They're not doing that quite as frequently. There's percentage of glue that they put down when they're spraying. The rest is diluted with alcohol. That's been cut down. And then there's the speed that they tow the spraying apparatus down the track, and it looked like for a while that was going faster. So those four different things can affect track prep. Well, I think Charlotte was pretty much a an S show for everybody Mm -hmm. out there. There was too much tire smoke. There was too much carnage out there. Uh, And I want to say my my memory's bad on chronology. I think we went to Atlanta next, and they bumped it up 5%. And then Sunday it was overcast, so they bumped it down some. I think, and you'd have to frame this to the NHRA guys, I think that they might have learned a lesson and said we have to address it per event per day here. Mm-hmm. St. Louis was phenomenal because we hardly ever saw the sun. And anytime you can keep the racetrack cool, it fixes a whole lot of issues. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and my opinion on track prep is if it's Bristol and the track's 140 degrees, man, you could dump a can of VHT all the way down the racetrack. We're not going to run big enough speeds to scare any of the parts manufacturers, and we're not going to be so hard on parts that the owners are upset that it costs a lot per run. But you get to Chicago on Friday night and the racetrack's 85 degrees, I get it. Cut down on the amount of glue you spray there, so the crew chiefs have to be a little more sensible with feeding it clutch. The G meter's not going to be so high. It's just not going to wear out parts quite as fast that way. So there's got to be a happy balance. But for me, the number one thing is you've got to cater to the fans in the stands. The fans watching the TV program at home can get an edited version. You guys know, you sit through an hour and 20-minute cleanup in the stands, Mm It's five minutes at home. They just go to commercial break and come back. So we've got to cater to the fans in the stands, not just with minimizing oil downs, but with giving them a show that's worthy of them buying a ticket. And that includes good enough track prep that the cars can 
adequately get down the track no matter what the temperature is. Well, it also it seems as though it's been an equalizer that has allowed some of the lesser funded teams, besides DSR and, and JFR, uh, to, uh, to to catch up. Maybe because they're not they're not cranking eleven thousand horsepower at it on every pass. Well, I guess you could look at it that way. Anytime there's a major rules platform change, it's kind of like when NASCAR waves a yellow flag, it bunches the field up. But I, I think. It's a case-by-case basis, so people are going to argue 10 years from now, look, this reduced track prep helped Terry McMillan win the U.S. Nationals. And I'm going to say, really? Let's dig into this a little bit more. Mm -hmm. First round, Terry McMillan's against Scott Palmer, and Terry McMillan goes out there and smokes the tires. Except Scott Palmer shut off on the starting line because of the current point system. If he would have oiled down the track, he would have been out of the top 10, and he couldn't afford to make the run down there. So. Hmm. Then Terry McMillan would have been a first-round loser at, at Indy. So, uh, I don't know. Steve Torrance has won the last two races. Robert Height just won this event. Uh, J.R. Todd won, won uh, Indy in Funny Car. I think what, any time that you see a situation where you can't throw all the horsepower at the track, it takes away some of the advantage for the higher funded teams it's not that it necessarily gives an advantage to the to the part-time teams Mm -hmm. it just takes away a little of the advantage of the dsrs jfrs coletta motorsports cars Mm -hmm. but the cream's always going to rise to the top you know it's still a sport about parts and people and and that takes money man well you know uh, good luck this year it's uh it's been a weird year for you and your team he's he's got some victories first round losses of any funny car nice. and now we have three in a row and you can't do that and contend for a championship yeah. we stayed and tested yesterday and we ran phenomenal the problem with testing is there's no trophies and there's no points you know? <laughs> so the, the, you know the old monday nationals that doesn't do us any good except give us a warm fuzzy feeling going into dallas but there were clearly some things we had to fix on our race car I, you know i think we had a an air switch on the throttle pedal uh, messed us up at Indy, delayed all our timers on, on the first round, and the car went out there and, and went in a tire shake and smoke. And uh, we had the blower drive shaft break first round against John Forster. Man, those never break. Yeah. Uh, so, but you know what? We're going to have to be better than that. We're going to have to figure out how to be nearly flawless for the rest of the year, or we're not going to be contending for the championship. Yeah. Now, in, in their Grace's NHRA has made the world finals worth points and a half, which I just I just think that's dumb. No race, no race should be worth more points than any other race. Indy used to be points and a half yep. two decades ago, but it was one more round. It was a 32-car show. Well, now Indy's back to points and a half, and I get they want to put on a show for the millennials that don't want to wait two hours and want to see a championship go down to the last race of the year, but I worry that we're losing some of the core audience here that that likes stuff i know a lot of people were upset about going to a thousand foot guess what i think that was a brilliant move on nhra's part it was either slow the cars way way down or shorten the racetrack so we could still go out there and race and look what that did that might have been one of the best decisions in motorsports it's made for a ton of close races and has kept our sport viable and alive well i also i i still think that you ought to have to race on split uh Split lengths at uh, at Pomona, you run a thousand foot. At uh, Vegas, you run thirteen twenty, and just you know throw a throw a a monkey wrench into the uh, the tuners. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't that be cool to see? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like running a road course you know, or a uh, or a short track, you know. Yeah, but you know, like Phoenix, Gainesville. Yeah. Now, now, don't you quote don't you quote me on this? The crew chiefs are going to lynch me for this. <laughs> We're having a tough enough time get, keeping them lit to a thousand foot. But I think that would be phenomenal. Yeah, it, 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 it sure uh, make people think about it. Uh, but uh, anyway, hey, thanks, thanks a lot for calling, Jack. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely see you at uh, at Vegas and Pomona, and uh, you know, good luck the rest of the year. It's uh, it's it's always a pleasure when you call in. It's uh, you know, you give well, us a I'm perspective. Just, b- between now and Dallas, Donnie, don't forget to call me. I need some driving tips, and I know you are the man. Well, you know, you helped me at the media challenge. You know that I won five years ago. Yeah, five yeah. years ago. Was it five years no. ago? Seems like yesterday. It was 2014. Dar. Dar, Dar doesn't matter. The man's undefeated. Well, there, there it is on the screen right there. For yeah. God's sake, w- w- well, uh, respect when due. Yes. I mean, come on, Jack. I come in and win my first race. I retire. Man. You know who it's can amazing. say? You know, and I still get sponsors. You and Gary Selzy, huh? Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> He's out. Uh, you know. 
delivering pizzas or something now, I think. <laughs> Building truck boxes and yep. doing quite well. Sells the enterprises. Yeah, yep. he, does, he does very good. And his son's running the world of outlaws, and uh, they're still having a good time out there. You know what I hope? I hope after Dallas, we're having a winner's conversation. All right. Okay. I'll take you up on that. So if you yeah, win Dallas, you're going to come on the show, is what you're saying. That's one I want bad, guys. We'll send a limo. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Enjoy your night. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Bye. Boy, what a class act Jack is. And, yeah. uh, and that's and as I mentioned earlier, when he started to when when he was down on the top end and they walk up to him with a microphone, he talks about the driver's safety and why it why yeah. is it, why it's at this position right now in time. And you know You know what? He's always at the museum and he's always speaking and They'll be at the reunion and funerals yeah. and stuff. He knows the history of the sport. He respects the history of the sport, yeah. and, and uh, he's well well versed in all that. And well, a very good speaker. Speaking of the history of the sport, we got Kevin Stith on the phone. Oh, the history of T-shirts. That's it, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kevin. How we doing, guys? Good. How you doing? How's things in uh, Texas? Uh, uh, cruising down beautiful Highway 78, looking for my favorite Mexican restaurant to go get a margarita. All right. Dang. You on tour? Yeah, yeah, Donnie, we're on tour. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the trailer's yeah, over gonna, at Ronnie Young's, gonna, right? Yeah, trailer's at Ronnie Young's. We, uh, he had to make a couple of small adjustments after we kind of screwed it up after we got it from him, and uh, he got that done, and we figured while we're here, we'll do the good guy show at uh, the Texas Motor Speedway this weekend. And nice. See how that goes, and then lug it home and get ready for the reunion, which is only, I think, by the time we get home, we leave a, a three week, weeks a week away and a half after something? that. Yeah. 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 Well, I I did so. uh, bag a couple of the uh, the new T-shirt designs, which uh, which Bruce has here, and we've got uh, Lyle Greenberg and Nancy Matter on uh, on as well. But uh, I very cool. To, I want to put up the, the uh, Isky Camfather one, which will debut at uh, the California Hot Rod Reunion at the Stith Trailer, and uh, also the uh, uh, the Eat Sleep Nitro shirt, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tank um, Halter Top. Halter Top. Halter Top. There it is. Hey. One size fits all, Dar. One size fits all. I'm still not going to wear one, dude. <laughs> Well, Dar, if you do, you should wear your aerobic bra. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Keep it clean. It uh, is a family show. No, we, uh, we're we really, really happy and pleased to announce the deal that we put together with uh, with Iski. Um, you know, just, just a cornerstone of the sport. And uh, we're just honored to be able to, uh, you know, get some of his merchandise back out there and and uh, get it available to people that you know hasn't hasn't been available in quite a while. So, you know, I found out today um, that the that that Cam Father uh, drawing that's on there is uh, a Pete Millar. <laughs> that is, yeah. Okay. Yep. So good. So you guys are going to be sued then? Oh, wow. They, oh now. He, he, you know, I believe Mr. Iskandarian what, paid for it. <laughs> Dearly. What Pete doesn't know won't hurt him, right? Well, he's no longer with us, but that's all right. Yes, I know. Uh, yeah, well, no, look, at we've got another wonderful thing that Kevin uh, uh, came up with earlier this year was coming up with a Rookie of the Year for uh, the the Heritage and uh, uh, Funny Car Chaos type classes for. Uh, um, for this year, and originally there were uh, three, and then it kind of evolved into uh, uh, Lyle Greenberg and a uh, guy that drives uh, for Eddie Knox, uh, Billy Morris, and Nancy Matter. And uh, and we've got two of them on the phone, Lyle and uh, and Nancy. And uh, how are you guys doing? You, you doing okay? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks, Star. Doing well, very much. Thank you. Well, you know, it's. I mean, I've, I've known Lyle for God, I guess about ten years. I believe when your daughter was junior drag racing. And oh, I think it's almost twenty years now. So no, I guess it's twelve or thirteen years. <laughs> okay, good, good. But you know, I mean, it's it's uh, it's very cool that uh, that Kevin would step up and do this and really recognize uh, an under recognized class 
uh, of, of fuel racing. And, uh, you know, it's great to, to have a, a crop of three uh, drivers that are that are this talented and plus you know like Lyle you, you do a lot of things outside of just being on the racetrack and that's an important part of, of your operation as it is with Nancy absolutely we've been we've been promoting the heck out of our car promoting the heck out of the races you know I was I, I grew up dreaming of doing match racing with a nitro funny car and obviously in today's environment that's not really possible but we actually did enough match racing over the summer to kind of make me like fantasize that maybe I was match racing for a living or something. And we did a lot of shows and displays and stuff like that. Well, you got a great looking car, and it seems to be the performance is coming around very nice. And, and you were runner up this year? Yeah, we got runner up at the uh, Funny Car Chaos in the A field over there at Amarillo. Nice. That's a, that's a good uh, start there. And Nancy, you've you've uh, you've got a number of projects that that your uh, your funny car kind of leads on too, don't you? Yeah, we 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 work really hard at what we do. I didn't think she was, you know, when we first met her, Dar Bakersfield. She talked about driving, putting together a funny car, and I didn't take her serious. And now I I see her out there, a beautiful car. She got Dale Poldy, a legend, tuned in that thing, and it's great to see him out there. Yeah, uh, with you guys, and uh, looks like you're making some nice runs. Well, thank you. And by the time we had gotten to Pomona or to uh, Bakersfield, we were actually picking up parts that were the War Eagle parts out there, and uh, we had already got we had already had the car for four or five months at that point. Oh, okay. Well, to have Dale Poldy associated with that is uh, <laughs> one way to start off right. Well, and and. I'm very, very lucky because I grew up in Southern California, and Dale actually used to come to the house I grew up in, and uh, so I've known him since I was a little girl. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the whole evolution of him and I crossing paths between, uh, you know, my music career industry, you know, the music industry career, and then meeting up with Dan Haran, and then Dale tuning Dan's car, and then coming back and now he's with our car it's it you guys have no idea it's such a blessing he's an amazing incredible human being not only on track on track but off track yeah i agree he's a great man he's funny yeah oh yeah very funny i've had some good times with him and uh been around him during the match race era and and all the funny car racing that we did and uh he's very talented He's he's an incredible human being, and when we're I, very lucky with him and Valerie, and yeah, we're very lucky. When uh, I worked for McEwen, we bought an 18-wheeler, and it wasn't finished, and Dale finished the inside of the trailer, put hydraulic ramps in it, and built all the cabinets, and had that thing, you know, that we can work out of it the whole year and, and beyond, so he's not just talented with the car, he's talented with Harley-Davidson's, and fabricating, and painting, and... Uh, Great guy. Yeah, I believe it. Because when you, like, if you're sitting there and you're talking about something and all of a sudden he'll, somebody will mention a big rig. And then he'll start, like, driving like, you know, like he'll start making the sounds like, yep. and he'll be yep. shifting and, and doing that. And he just, he's an incredible human being. And for people that don't go on the other side of Dale, like, they, yeah. you know, don't he, do he's that. just really an incredible human being. Yeah, he is. He's very good. And like I said, to see him out there uh, around any car, but your car, uh, is great to see him out there doing it because I know he still has a passion for it. And, Lyle, yeah. you got a good crew chief too, right? Don't you have uh, Jake Sanders helping you out over there? Well, you know, Jake was instrumental in putting my car together. Okay. And uh, when we tested it for the first time, I flew him out here to Albuquerque, and we tested for three days with it. And then he helped me at Tucson. There was a UNFC race there in Tucson that we did some testing at. I've actually been tuning the car at the track on my own since then. But Jake has been there for me, consulting, you know, saying, well, Matt, why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? But yeah. Most everything at the track right now is all on me. 
Well, that's good. Well, if you put it together right the first time and you got somebody to fall back on, like Jake's got a lot of talent and still a young kid, but he's another great fabricator and welder and crew chief, and uh, his dad's car runs really good, and that's all on him. Well, he, he's been super. You know, I got hooked up with him last year. I was looking for somebody to help me with the car because I'm a, I'm a big believer that it's, it's better to get somebody that you pay to, to, to keep you from making the mistakes you would make because you don't know what you don't know. Right. And, uh, you can always fire them. You can't fire yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so got hooked up with Jake and, and took the car back to Jake last fall and he had it for a few months and uh, got it really ship shape and then I'm I'm really proud of the way of course it turned out looks wise. I think it uh, you know we really wanted to make a car that looked like it came right out of the 70s and it I does. think we succeeded. It does. I love that name too. Well, hey Kevin, you still there? Yes. You haven't oh, made yeah. margaritas yet? <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm waiting to walk inside. Uh, it's already mixed and sitting on my table, though. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Hurry up, hey, Dar. That's, hey, hey, Vicky. Vicky does a fine job. She has for the last 34 years. Jeez, all right, yes. Uh, hey, Kevin, uh, you know, one of the things that, that you had mentioned to me earlier that, that you felt was important was to was to really talk about the, the other things that, that these drivers do on the off of the track. Oh, absolutely. Um I mean, the whole Legends of Nitro and, and now the Rookie of the Year, it all came about, you know, just our company, myself, trying to pay back the sport, something that it's been, um, you know, it's been very, very good to us for the last 40 years. And uh, in, in a small way, we're just trying to, to pay it back a little bit, pay it forward maybe. And by the the new thing, the Rookie of the Year, it really meant something to me to put it together as not so much going out and running up and down a track and setting low ET and top speed, but what do you do off the track? What do you do to promote the sport? Um, how do you treat those you know ten and twelve year old kids that come up, you know, with the big eyes and, and they're all interested and uh, you know do you chase them out or you you know you want them to sit in the car and take their picture? It, it's just there's a lot more to drag racing been running up and down a racetrack and i think the three people we've got this year with uh you know nancy lyle and billy uh you know they exemplify that it, it just it's it's great to see what they're doing and how they're promoting uh the nostalgia funny car class it's not a nostalgia funny car class <laughs> thank you thank you thank you you know one time dale uh we were up at havana and he said that this little girl came up to the pit, and I was I was getting my driver's suit on. And this little girl came up to the pit, and I come outside, and he goes, Hey, there's this little girl that walked off with her dad, and she was crying because she wanted to meet the driver and this and that. I'm like, no way. So what am I? I'm gullible, right? So I, oh, my gosh, where'd she go? And he points her out. I ran all the way over to the staging lane to <laughs> find that little girl, to sign a hero card, and to, like, invite her back to our pit, to put her in the car, and after we ran, of course, and all this. And, you know, of course, Dale's sitting over there snickering because she wasn't over there crying. But it was really neat that, you know, he he inspires all this stuff to happen and and with things that you don't really realize is going on. So I agree with you, Kevin, so much, so much. Well, everybody, uh, you know, when you when you do make it to the California Hot Rod reunion, make sure you go over to the, the Stith Legends of Nitro uh, trailer. The new and, trailer. And yeah. the new trailer. And then also take a look With at the... With air conditioning. Uh, yeah. Oh. On the outside or the inside? Uh, <laughs> yes, Donnie. Hey, hey, Donnie. I mean, you don't have, like, misters coming off the awning for the yeah, us people that are... You know, think about that, no, Kevin. It's not going to be that hot up there. Come on. Yeah. Never Donnie, I was I was thinking about you. We put in two air conditioners, one towards the back where you can sit on one of the chairs and kind of hide from everybody. That's good. And sign autographs. Yeah. You can put yep. Isky, you can put Isky <laughs> on there to sign your officially licensed uh, merchandise. No, too. I was, I was going to model my West Coast Funny Car Factory <clears throat> T-shirts. That's a hell right? of an idea. By the way, uh, uh, Kevin, uh, Donnie needs a new one. Yeah. Uh, I me that one I got five too. years ago is still holding up, though. <laughs> well, uh, you know, there's something about quality, but we, I'm sure we can probably find one or two we can work into. But we got to make some nitro reports here. It, it, A lot of people it, are it, asking about those. It, they'll be ready for the March meet, I can tell you that for sure. They will? Yep. Wow. 
for wow. stepping up. Okay. How do you like that, Joe Walla? Yeah. <laughs> we got T-shirts. <laughs> Oh, he will too it, soon. It, <laughs> yeah, but it, Joe Wall will just, you know, ride him out with a felt pin on the shirt. <laughs> I know him. <laughs> I know how he rolls. That's pretty hey, awesome. By the way, Donnie, just a real, a real selfish plug, okay? December 1st is the last and final stiff printing Christmas party. Dar knows the location. Yep. Oh, oh a little pressure there. Really? Oh, ride together. Could be hey, hey. Road trip. Oh, no. <laughs> I got a guitar. Can I play it? Can I play at the party? I got to loan you one of my jackets. I got a Stratocaster. I can borrow uh, Dar's jacket. And Joe Walla gave me a a hat, a cowboy hat. Nice. There yeah. you go. Well, thanks a lot for I calling you in, you guys. In some of, uh, I think you look good in some of Walla's Levi's and, and one of those uh, stage jackets he's got. That's it. Yeah, the Levi's with the holes in it? No way. No. <laughs> J- junk hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you so much for having. Uh, I can speak for myself for me and our team on with your show, and you know, hey, Lyle, it's all good. Billy, it's all good. Well, thank you so it, much. It's nice guys. to have you guys on. You got t- new teams and beautiful cars and uh, a bright future ahead of you guys. So. Thanks for well, taking time for us. I think it's partly us. because you guys have promoted so much interest in the nostalgia scene. It's great. Okay, wow. just don't use the word nostalgia, okay? Yeah. yeah. No, it's a it's nice and funny okay. card. <laughs> and we're completely legal. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> and Lyle, I did talk with Blake Bowser today. Yeah. Well, we'll talk later. Okay, cool. Right. <laughs> what, Corvettes are illegal? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot for calling in, uh, and uh, we'll see you, everybody, at the uh, California Hot Rod Reunion. You got it. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, guys. Good night, guys. Bye. Well, that was good, Dar. They, uh, like I said, new people coming into the sport and beautiful cars, and you know they they look correct. Period. Correct. Mm -hmm. You know they're not some of them new cars. Like what's that green car you hang around with? That's got the pro mod body on it. Uh, the one that the Bobby Cottrell drives. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying the. I'm not saying the owner's name. Bucky. Yeah, you already got in trouble over that. Did I did. Jeez. No, Kenny Youngblood did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, by the way, I was down at the the uh, price transfer. When? Uh, about through uh, about a month. I guess it was about a month ago. But I talked to Kenny last week. Let and me he look said, at my phone and see if I got the call. Uh, well, you're busy. Oh. I didn't get the call. I went mid afternoon, so I, I I know how tough it is for you to get off work. Well, uh, you know, I got to work on Steve Radjic's Agent Orange. I I heard that. Pro Outlaw boat. We're that. getting it ready to run. Uh, and we got to hook you up with the guys from Race Pack to, to fix figure the out how to fix this computer and get and then, it to, uh, to read with. Uh, I got to have like, Magic Mike, Motor Mike, come over. Uh, Mike Cruz. We're gonna finish up the boat, put the motor in it, put the prop in it. We're ready to go. All right. So well, look. Um, let's take a quick commercial break, and uh, and Sean, are you there? Let's uh, let's get Sean on for just a second. Okay, Sean's on. Sean, sorry, we're we're running we're ready running late. Uh, we're just going to run some commercials, and we'll come back to you as soon as we get out of the commercial break. Okay. Sounds good, guys. All right, yeah. thanks. About an hour or so. That's Sean Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> Vibrations Motorsports specializes in the parts you need for gas, alcohol, and nitro engines. If you're muscling a funny car or top fueler down the quarter mile, cutting a rooster tail across the lake, or cruising the boulevard, Good Vibrations has the blower and fuel system solutions for your personal ride and race car. If you want to go fast, really fast, then Good Vibrations Motorsports is ready to hear from you at goodvibesracing.com. Aeromotive fuel systems on the street, in the water, or at the track. If you can drive it, we can fuel it.
Stith Printing is your leader in corporate and individual identity marketing with over three decades of delivering the best quality garments for your budget and promotions. At Stith Printing, we offer in-house design, providing strong graphic solutions for any project with fabric screen printing or high-density embroidery. Stith's diverse background and attention to detail gets the job done on time and on budget, then ships the job to your door. Whether you field an international racing team, a statewide construction company, a local softball team in a church league, or the convenience store down the street, Stith Printing has the crew to deliver your next printing and branding project. One other uh, new advertiser that we've got is uh, Hot Probes, and it's... Uh uh, Crystal and, and Danny Gerber, who have got uh, the Wasn't Easy Firebird. And uh, while we haven't got a commercial done yet, I wanted Donnie to just talk about why you need EGT. <laughs> you know, the probes go into the headers and they take the exhaust gas temperature to the race back data logger. And, you know, there's a lot of heat cycles going on on things. And after a while, they wear out. It's a consumable product, you know. And uh, Crystal and her husband have bought this company not too long ago. And they even parked the funny car to get this company rolling. And it's just a great product, top quality. And, uh, you know, like I said, they're consumable items that all the crew chiefs need. So they're at the track, and you can buy them right from them. And, you know, it's just a great product. And now I guess they've caught up enough to where they can bring their funny car back out. That's great. Going to be at the Hot Rod reunion. Don't forget to mention John Wirtz's name. Otherwise, we'll get nasty emails. We'll never emails. hear the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get nasty emails. But, uh, he's doing a great job over there, and uh, it's nice to see them get the band back together. So. And it's pretty cool, too, because uh, you know, now that they're back, there's some other cars that are coming back, too, including Mark Metters. Yeah, and uh, you know he, he um, and now that Chris Crable is driving um, the Cascade, a, the car. Cascade car, uh, and then also that uh, Mike Peck just bu- bought the Mac Attack, just bought the Mac, Mac Attack, and had a del- they, uh, they guess they just got it back into Washington State. So I don't know if they're going to make the reunion, but that's. Man, that's a lot of cars that. Yeah. Plus, that, aren't that you building one too, Dar? No, no, I'm no. off of it for for just a little while. Okay. You know, I, I thought you and Kevin Stiff teamed up <clears throat> and you're going to run. No, that. in fact, if you guys are thinking about getting a uh, nitro funny car, there's a guy by the name of Paul Romine that's got a pretty bitchin' rig that uh, Mike Calvary's uh, finished uh, uh, freshening, and uh, it's got a new motor or uh, freshened motor. A couple of transmissions, a rear end, at an awesome price. Uh, Mike Cavallari, I think most of you guys know where, where to get a hold of him. And uh, or if you got a problem, send us some informa- Send us your information on uh, info at nitroreports.com, and we'll get you hooked up with him because uh, it's an awesome car. Uh, Romine has not hung up his helmet, but he's hung up owning a car. That's a great car too. Oh, it's it one sure of my is. favorites. It sure is. The it's Man a, of War. I need spitzer. to get Steve Radzik to quit boat racing and buy that car. Ooh, I'm liking the sound of this right it's a it is a bargain for what he's selling it for yeah well so, uh, anyway if you're if you're interested get your ass off off of that couch and go <laughs> go to the, the california hot rod reunion it's now combined with the groups one and two all the nitro cars all the gassers everything it's going to be a heritage series world finals this year for the first time finally it's going to be great to see now we've got sean bowen on the phone speaking in this Hi, of funny sean, how are you man sorry we're late I'm doing great. Oh, no problem. How's the weather back there? You're in Michigan? No, it's not bad, actually. We're still in the 80s. Yeah, nice. Oh, huh. Nice. So, It'll Sean, are you not driving that car anymore? We're hearing rumors that uh, you guys have parted ways or something. You want to tell us the story? Yeah, we. Uh, I don't drive for Michael no more. Uh, we split up after the Boise race, and... Uh, Probably build our car back again, and hopefully we'll be out soon. Yeah, get the family back together, huh? Yeah, well, we've always been together. I mean, my dad and Scott were, you know, with this Bartone deal, too, so. Yeah. It's still a good deal, but. Well, you guys got a great family and built some great cars, and uh, I really appreciate the work you guys do. 
So if any if anybody's looking for a, for a driver who's uh, in, solidly in the points uh, to, to run at the uh, California Hot Rod Reunion, would you be able to pack your helmet and fire suit and be out here that afternoon? Oh yeah. Okay, just no check it. Just check it. Fire up the Boeing <laughs> private jet. Yeah. Well, he can go over to Coletta's and hit your ride. Hit your ride, right? How's your How's your dad doing? He was uh, when I talked with him up in at Boise. He was uh, He was saying he didn't mind taking this year off. No, he's doing fine. He's been uh, working on his boat. Actually, put a hydro together and been tuning with that and having fun. But a hydro. Fun that, so. Yeah, he bought a, a hydro last year, and we we built a twin turbo uh, LS motor for it. And wow, man. that's no easy project. <clears throat> yeah, it's been pretty fun. Yeah. So what kind of body have you got hanging in the shop to, for your new funny car? Uh, currently, we have a 70 Camaro split bumper deal. Good deal. Um, but I don't know. Dad's kind of talking he might want something different, so we'll see where that falls. All right, good. Well, I just want to touch bases with you. And, and uh, again, if, uh, you, if you guys out there with a funny car need a driver, uh, cool. here's one that's uh, currently number two in points. And uh, yep. he sure knows his stuff. And uh, he could be out, you know. You could you could be testing on Monday with Bucky and uh, and racing on uh, on Thursday with Sean Bowen. Right. <laughs> and even if you don't want a driver, if you want a car, they build the nice chassis. And maybe not between now and the reunion, but no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but Bowen Race Cars built some pretty awesome cars as well. Yeah, if you don't believe it, go look at that California Charger that Cruz Petragon yeah. has. That's hey, have you heard if Cruz is coming out here or if he's just sort of dangling the uh, hook out there? Uh, I personally haven't heard anything, uh, so I couldn't tell you for sure. All right. All right. Well, so- sounds like it's time to get in touch with him. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'll see you guys out there at the reunion either way. So uh, That's great. I'm going to come and hang out at least. So. Oh, That's good. Great. Come up in the tower and help us. Okay, I'll do that. At least help okay. Mike English, all right? Yeah, help Mike English. <laughs> well, Thanks Sean, a lot, Sean. Sean, thank you for calling in, taking time. Say hello to your family. Uh, I will. Thanks. Okay. Right. Bye bye. Pretty talented guy, right there, Dar. He sure is. Yeah. Uh, and, and like I say, I keep saying it, but they built some beautiful race cars from the ground up there. Yeah, it's it, it, you know, it's pretty amazing. Well, now you've got a catalog there in front of you, right here, and we got one of the guys from Good Vibrations Motors. Well, I got a little story. Yeah. So, you know, we're getting ready to race Steve Radjic's Agent Orange at uh, Fien- or at Parker, Arizona, 13th and 14th of October. And uh, it always seems I don't have all the parts and pieces. And I called, <laughs> I called them the other day and said, hey, where are you guys at? It was Sunday. And, well, we're driving back from Sacramento. Well, James had won the Sifka Championship, and they were driving back. Oh, we'll be back in the shop at 4.30. Well, I needed, you know, flywheel bolts and some O-rings for my filter, you know. And they've got it all there, whether it's for all the funny cars I put together or Steve Radjic's boat, I'm in there all the time buying parts and pieces. And, uh, you know, I asked Jim Mayer if it was going to cost me more money to get parts, beans I had the new funny car champion putting my order together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's pretty prestigious, right? It sure is. You know, and, and also, I mean, just... Wait, d- hey, you could get this at dragparts.com. Or or go on down to uh, Painter in uh, right. in Whittier, Whittier and pick one up. Yeah, it's and also great catalog. Pick up one. Pick up one of those uh, Airmotive uh, fuel pumps. Uh, Airmotive catalogs and uh, shop for fuel pumps down there too. And James, you're on. Yeah, what's going on, guys? There you are. What's up, champ? <laughs> Nothing much. What's going on? How come it took you so long to win the championship? <laughs> I don't know. It took five races. We had to draw it out, you know? <laughs> Made for a good story. This is your second season driving a funny car, isn't it? That's it. Second season, and uh, finally seemed to, to get it uh, dialed in there at the last race, and they had a bracket car thanks to the old man doing some tuning. Well, it seems like he knows how to tune that car to, to run on a, uh, on, on a uh, index. solid index, and... and uh, uh, he sh- he sure knows what he's doing. He sure tuned a lot of those runs, you know, that uh, over over the years in his own car. Yeah, definitely. And uh, every time he made a decision, he always asked me uh, what I was planning on doing. So he kind of tuned for it. And he put a fifty one, fifty two in the car every run. I just didn't have the confidence in him, and I kept lifting. Uh, but uh, yeah, the car we could have won fifty one, fifty two all day. 
Man, that's awesome. Well, James, I, talk about the point situation because I know it came down to you were dead even going into the finals, weren't you? Yeah, we were. So uh, after Reading, I read lit. So otherwise, the points lead would have been a lot, lot larger. But after that, the points lead became only two points uh, difference, and that's like one qualifying position. So uh, the guys laid down a, a trimp in the the rough and ready. They laid down a fifty-one with a five, and uh, we figured, hey, we have to go for it. So we went for it, and we ran a forty-nine-eight. Uh, came up a little short, and going into the next round. Of qualifying, we looked at it and said, "Hey, if we get second, we tie, and then we have to go round for round, which could be could be big, or uh, you know, we, or we can try to go on kill." And we watched a couple other guys make some passes and uh, got down there, and I got ripped for the stripe, and I lifted a little early, but it went 54 and uh, clocked, you know, for second place. So that ended up putting us dead tie um, going wow. into elimination. So. Um, and then, you know, being one to two, we were on the other side of the ladder, so we just kind of had to keep going uh, back and forth. And uh, he kept going first, so I kept sitting there having to watch, <laughs> yeah. having to watch him win. And then uh, had to follow Chase, and uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, just uh, one round at a time, we kept winning, um, and uh, kept going back and forth. I ended up actually lining up against uh, Yosem from Sweden, which was pretty cool, and ended up getting the race. A uh, guy from another country and. And their whole team was really cool, and it came down to a pretty close race, and uh, ended up getting uh, getting the victory over them. But overall, really cool guys, and uh, they're actually going to run the the reunion. So you yeah, know, you said they're cool. going to put a fuel altered body on it. Run. Uh, I don't know about fuel altered, but they have a spare bullet uh, to go seven zero. I think they're planning on running the seven zero pro class, but they uh, they're definitely going to try to get an altered body mounted here soon. Boy, do we and, need more funny cars in seven zero pro? <laughs> yeah, I wish they had an old school body to throw on it. Yeah. Um, I lend them mine, but it's not old enough. So. <laughs> well, well, doesn't Jay- Richard Standard have one they could borrow? Yeah, that's true. he does. He does. He does. <laughs> you know what? It's uh, it's a great series, and you guys have some great cars, and and it really validates the series when you got cars coming over from Sweden to run with you. That's uh, pretty big, James. Yeah, uh, we just we've been talking to him all year. He came out to the Good Vibration March meet and. Uh, had dinner with us and talked and said he wanted to do this and I said let's let's figure it out and he met a lot of people and put a lot of things and he worked really hard to do it and it all came together here so yeah well like again great series and I love all the different body styles and all the paint jobs and uh, a really popular class how now. many cars did you ha- did did you have committed to the series this year uh, well, we had about 16 committed. Um, this last race, we had 11 come out um, for an eight-car show. We were trying to get 16 out there. We're just a couple guys financially, and um, just you know, they, they guys, a couple guys were testing the weekend before and ended up hurting some parts. So it didn't work out all that well. But hopefully, going into the future, the class looks like it's growing, and we're excited for it. And hopefully, you know, have five or six races next year. Um, we'll, so can't wait. Yeah, we hey, can't either. How's Sacramento for next year? Is it still gonna? You still planning on running there? Yeah, no, I think Sacramento looks like they're pretty good. I know um, so they were closing pretty soon, but from the looks of it, it looks like at least till 2020. And I heard a couple years after that they have an open kind of deal, so we could see it around for a couple more years. I would assume. That's great. No, you know, we don't. We certainly don't need to lose another drag strip in California. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Well, congratulations, James. It's really awesome. Uh, have you finished your hero card yet? Are you ready to? Uh, My hero card. Your I championship. Mean, I had some. I had a hero cards made for when we went back to uh, to Pittsburgh there, um, and uh, just kind of have those hanging on. But we've just been celebrating, hanging out. Uh, we've just been working hard yesterday to catch up, and today to catch up with some orders that we missed on Friday, and. And uh, just going to hopefully this weekend kind of relax a little bit and enjoy the weekend and work on some other little projects. I, uh, got a, we got the second car we're working on, so we'll slowly part, start to put that together. So, Well, it, James, don't bring it up that I'm going to be driving the second car because we're going to save that announcement mm-hmm. for another show. <laughs> okay, sounds good, Dan. Okay. And then I'll, one of the things I talked to James about, too, is that with this new uh, camera that I, that I picked up, we'll do some some uh, interviews from the shop. The, no, from the uh, track. The, the track from their their uh, tent at the California Hot Rod Reunion, and uh, even if we can't get a direct connection to the internet, we can record them and 
uh, and then I'll go over and sneak onto the wireless for the tower and uh, don't tell Josh Peterson and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we can we can upload them. Uh, so I'm planning on doing a bunch of videos from there. This new camera system is pretty uh, pretty awesome and and uh, makes it a whole lot easier for doing stuff on location like that. Hear that, Joe Walla? Technology's over here, baby. Uh-oh. Competition, <laughs> right? Hey, that's what drives it all, man. There there is no competition, James. Okay? <laughs> Just saying. Hey, James, thanks to you guys. You know, this past week, uh, always taking care of me with the parts and pieces I need. I always show up when it's time to ship everything out, and everybody's busy. But you guys always take care of me, and uh, we at the Agent Orange. Uh, Pro Outlaw Hydro, appreciate it. And thanks for advertising. For you know, I mean, you were one of the, you get you and your dad were were some of the people that uh, that actually got Donnie and I to do this show uh, uh, on our own. And and uh, so we're gonna know. sue you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're glad to be a part of it. Always tuning in, checking it out, uh, loving all the different people you got on there, and uh, it's been great. Well, thanks a lot, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. If uh, oh wait, I got to be in Whittier tomorrow, so I'll just stop by. Well, and say if you're hi. in there, pick up a catalog. Pick up the new Good Vibrations right. catalog. Sounds good. And see they got guys. the best tech support in the business. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, okay, James. James. Thank you. Take it easy. Bye bye. That's pretty. I mean, James busts his butt bringing that, reviving that whole Sifka program, and then. You know, to run it, that's a lot of work. And you know what a thankless job here. that is. Yeah, but, I mean, he's always promoting it and doing graphics, and he really takes care of every aspect of it. And then to race in the series, too, and get the car to all the tracks, I mean, that's quite an operation, and uh, they do it very well. No, it's great to, great to see a, a second-generation uh, racer who, who yeah. picked up where, you know, the Sifka was just parked for a while, the whole yeah. the organ, and, and the James would, would take the time to bring it back, and, you know, it's like... Like running any kind of a body like that is, you know, very much like herding wet cats. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I was there on Monday, and Jim Mayer, man, he had a grin like I've never seen before. Man, he was just glowing that his son did that good and won the championship. And of course, it just built up that whole Sifka program. You know. Well, we're gonna have to find out how many championships Jim won. Yeah, I don't know that. It's, uh, yeah, that Corvette, it's still hanging still up hanging in the Raptors at yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, So we'll have to get down there and talk to him about that. We'll do that. Well, uh, hey, Bruce, let's go to another commercial break. And uh, we'll come back on the other side, and, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what we're going to be doing up at the Hot Rod Reunion. And uh, let's see uh, some messages from our advertisers. Automotive fuel systems on the street, in the water, or at the track. If you can drive it, we can fuel it. Stith Printing is your leader in corporate and individual identity marketing with over three decades of delivering the best quality garments for your budget and promotions. At Stith Printing, we offer in-house design, providing strong graphic solutions for any project with fabric screen printing or high-density embroidery. Stith's diverse background and attention to detail gets the job done on time and on budget, then ships the job to your door. Whether you field an international racing team, a statewide construction company, a local softball team in a church league, or the convenience store down the street, Stith Printing has the crew to deliver your next printing and branding project. (laughs) 
Good Vibrations Motorsports specializes in the parts you need for gas, alcohol, and nitro engines. If you're muscling a funny car or top fueler down the quarter mile, cutting a rooster tail across the lake, or cruising the boulevard, Good Vibrations has the blower and fuel system solutions for your personal ride and race car. If you want to go fast, really fast, then Good Vibrations Motorsports is ready to hear from you at goodvibesracing.com. And that's Bruce's band in the background you can hear. It is? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They've been oh. playing in the back, you know. Like he, runs he does back it out all. Here. He does it He's all. He's a multifaceted guy. Yeah, those hey, guys, they're I, union, though. They're, they're off the clock as of right now. See, <laughs> they suddenly right now. stop. <laughs> well, I know that we have somebody on the uh, All right. We're not phone. sure who this is, whether it was misspelling or what, but is this Ron? Yeah, it's Ron Hudson. How are you doing, Ron? Ah, ha, ha. All right. Doing thanks. Good. You may remember uh, this uh, gentleman from the uh, Canadian Drag Racing Hall of Fame and, uh, and uh, Pacemaker Funny Cars and the, the uh, reigning uh, NHRA Heritage Series Funny Car uh, Champion owner. I know him from a lot of other things, Dar, but I can't say it on the show <laughs> because his wife might be watching. <laughs> What's the what's the update for next year with NHRA and the Heritage Series now that Salt Lake City is they've canceled all the funny cars and it's just going to be fuel altered. It's going to be fuel altered. <laughs> just Only. fuel altered. Yeah. I I mean I've heard a number of things that uh, from uh, Woodburn to uh, Tucson to Phoenix there and maybe combining at uh, at Oklahoma. Uh, so you know, I, I there's certainly places to race that that have been interested in the Heritage Series. Plus, um, you know, I understand from that um, that Seattle and Spokane were turned down, and I believe Edmonton was turned down for uh, for a, um, a show as well. So you know, it seems like there's there are people interested in 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 running. Uh, more heritage series, but uh, at, at this point, they don't usually announce a schedule until after the SEMA show. Right. And I did talk to uh, to Blake today, and he said that they he still hadn't heard a final schedule yet. I guess it's just wait and see. Yeah. You guys going to be at the uh, Hot Rod reunion? Yeah, we're going to test on the Monday. Good, good. Out, out there, and then we'll wait around. Ron, where you been? I noticed you, you've... Uh... Hadn't showed up at a couple races, and we didn't know if you uh, no, were we snowed just, in. We, or? Just, we just decided, after doing it for, geez, I can't even remember. I mean, we had Terry Cap driving the car, and Bob was the crew chief, and then we had Tim Boychuk, and then Ryan. We'd just done it. We raced so much, we just needed time off, right? I got gotcha. you, yeah. The car's ready to go, and everybody's excited now. and, and uh, So we only raced twice this year. The, it's uh, all right. March meet, and then in Edmonton, yeah. and uh, now back to Bakersfield. Well, there's always another race, right? And if you need a driver for the Hot Rod Reunion, just in case uh, uh, your son isn't available, uh, you know, Sean Bowen is looking for a ride, for the, and he'll be out there already. Believe me, he's available. He's already got a suit on. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hard to hold back all year, but I said, Ryan, we need a break. Those old guys are getting tired. Yeah, he's doing a great job in that car, man. you got to be a proud father with him. Yeah, we're pretty excited. How's just, Bob doing? Bob's doing good. Uh, he's, you know, sitting back, thinking on the car all the time and changing things. And, and uh, so he's pretty excited to get back, to. So Bob and I will fly in to Phoenix, then drive over to Bakersfield for the testing thing. And Ryan will bring the truck and trailer down and get it all set up. And we'll wait around for a week and and race the Hot Rod Reunion. Well, you'll definitely have a good time. And, uh, yeah, no, we're looking forward and to have it. And have you heard anything about a schedule for the uh, for uh, United Nitro Funny Cars for next year? No, I haven't, haven't heard much. I guess that'll be on the agenda because they're going to have a meeting in at, at, the, at the race. And, so. and you'll also have one of your patented uh, barbecues up there, too, in, in your pit, or yeah. in Bucky's pit? Yeah, we're doing that again, so... 
Yeah, that'll be good. So if you're All a funny car owner and, and uh, want to learn more about the United Nitro Funny Cars, uh, you know, come on Thursday night for the uh, the barbecue and and uh, orientation, so you can see what uh, is being offered for for uh, next year. Plus, I think one of the really amazing things that uh, the the that uh, Sifka or Sifka that uh, UNFC running on the same rules package as NHRA is that it has allowed a lot of cars like Wally Giavia and uh, uh, Billy Morris in in the Problem Child and, and some of the other cars out there to. Get more time to uh, more track time, and ha- have have made their tune-ups stronger and their ability to read tracks better. And uh, it's, I think it's been a real positive thing that, you know, it, when when all this started in like 2002, 2003, um, everybody was going, man, we need more places to race. Well, now we're getting awfully close to where there isn't hardly anybody that can run on all of them. It just takes yeah, so much time. True. Yeah. A lot of traveling, and you know the cost of sending a rig down the road is just phenomenal with permits and fuel and hotels and eating. And Until everybody goes back to ramp trucks with a sleeper on it, it's uh, you know it, it it takes quite a bit to get one of these cars to the track and and to maintain. So those it renegades now, those renegade trailers, they need permits too. Uh, I, Do we know? I don't know that, uh, but it's one of the things that uh, uh, that that is going to be brought up because uh, I understand California has gotten a bit more restrictive, you know, from uh, from from tailgate to uh, to nose, you know, it's got to be, and, and also then you know then in the enforcement of uh, nitro regulations in that that forty uh, gallons, well, four hundred pounds. Is, yeah. is 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 all that they're allowing, you know, particularly in California, but that Homeland Security is really correct down on that. For all of you guys who run Nitro, you better uh, make sure that that uh, you you you've got your uh, your papers correct and that uh, you're not carrying uh, eight, you know eight drums of Nitro for your buddies without a permit. Yeah, it's always a challenge. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's always something all right. But, yeah, 400 pounds is as much nitromethane, or as, I think it's as much fuel as you can carry, which would also include gasoline or alcohol. So, you know, check check the... Uh, um, you know the the uh, DMV and and uh, highway patrol in your own state, and particularly in California, for towing out here, uh, and and make sure that you're uh, not going to get in, uh, you know, some hassle. I understand the first one's free, but uh, you know it's it, it it can be a real pain. So That's we'll always interesting. We'll see you out here on on uh, that Monday before the uh, before the reunion, and uh, you know, glad you guys are back, and and uh, at least can can work to uh, to defend uh, your championship. Maybe uh, yeah. maybe give Bobby and and Bucky a little run for their money. We'll try our best. That's great. We'll say hi to Bob for us, Wayne, and, and also to your son. Okay. See you okay. guys. Okay. See you at the Thanks barbecue, Ron. <laughs> okay. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Wow, Dar. Man, had a lot of people. Okay, was that enough show, everybody? <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, look, Don Garlitz is on the phone. <laughs> Again? Tell him call back next week. He us. <laughs> As I mentioned, we're gonna have a, we'll have another uh, uh, show on that Tuesday before the California Hot Rod reunion. Blake Bowser is going to, uh, I don't know if he's going to be in studio, but maybe we might be doing Skype again with him. Maybe J.R. Todd will be <clears> on. <throat> he's been dogging us. I noticed that. He we sort we of wanted said, to have him on as Andy winner for this show. And he's at uh, Casey Kane's wedding in Charlotte. He's always flying someplace on the night when we need him. Hmm. I've noticed that. Well, he's got a good excuse or an alibi. He's Coletta Air, right? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> he's got his own private jet boy, now that he's it, won Indy twice. It, their, their team has just been kicking ass this yeah. year. It's so great to see. And every time it's like, well, did you see that video that that, uh, uh, that they did, uh, the Coletta video they did for, uh, for the 100th? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And. Nice. You know, we didn't talk about it at all, but Jim O is gone from the team after 30 years of service. And, and there's plenty of rumors of where he's going. Yeah, big rumors. I know that he's going to tune Kevin Kinsley's car at Dallas. That's great. And that's the only plans that are being released right now. But, uh, yeah, because Kevin's car is a, basically a Coletta car, the, the motor combination and the chassis. So, you know, look forward to that and hope he can kick some ass out there. And I keep hearing that uh, Alan Johnson's going to come out with his own uh, operation next year for Top Fuel. Oh, well, that'd be interesting. I wonder who's driving. Uh, I know, but I've been sworn to secrecy. Mm. 
But I'll tell you off this. Oh, oh man. You know how, you I don't know, know if how this I can goes. keep a secret, man. All right, well, then I just won't. I'll have it on Facebook. <laughs> in a, I'll have it on Facebook in an hour, folks. Smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is this is that uh, that that Kalina video. It's uh, it, it's a uh, it's a pretty awesome piece that uh, uh, that they do, that somebody put together for the hundredth win uh, for Connie's hundredth win, and it starts out with uh, with a, a shot of Scott, which is you know pretty cool. Pretty emotional time there. Connie was so excited that they won Indy that he actually stayed and was in the winner's circle photos. <laughs> that never happened. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Con- Connie seems very involved this year. I've noticed. You know that he's he's hanging around more. He's on the starting line more. He's he's really showing a lot of enthusiasm for what's been happening. Yeah, well, cool that's good. You know, his health's better now, <clears> and uh, he's. Uh, He's still out there doing it. Yeah, I remember when you interviewed him when the, when they brought out that, uh, that tribute car, the tribute car that that was built, and boy, he was just beaming from ear to ear. Yeah, that. That was it was an cool. emotional interview with him, and uh, well deserved that they built that car for him. But he told some good stories about that car. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, so you think we'll ever get J.R. Todd on here? Well. I might have to drag him in here, you know. He says, oh, I feel like I'm dogging, and I go, well, you are. <laughs> so we're going to get him on the show. It might be, you know, like a hostage situation where he's taped <laughs> to a chair. And, in, the, in the limo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, taped in the airplane. But, uh, yeah, we'll get him on here. We've got a lot of people that want to be on the show. Trying to coordinate everything is a little hard during race season. And, we, and something we're, we'll really pay attention to when the World Finals come, because a lot of those guys will be in town. Let's, yeah, they got you know, no excuse. Yeah, right? we'll plan on we'll plan on doing that. We'll have a line out then down the down, right. down the stairway. Yeah. Okay. Next. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there's yeah. the hundredth win. Yeah, it's going to be tough at Pinocchio's. Oh man. Oh yeah. Oh man. Right. Yeah, but it's, there's such a great bunch of people. I and and uh, in fact, I was talking with Ron Caps this morning, and he said that he's getting on the plane tomorrow with his wife, and they're heading over to Hawaii to do the uh, Napa tour over there. Nice. And uh, he's got a rough life, Ron. Oh Cap. man, <laughs> you kidding? He's a rock star. Man. Limos everywhere. Yeah, you know, private planes. <sighs> Yeah, you know. but yeah, every year he goes in and does one for the uh, <clears throat> the local Napa group that's over in in Hawaii and does videos for them and commercials yeah. and all kinds of stuff and it'll, it'll start showing up on his Facebook page. Man, there's Tim Richards, Tim and Kim. Man, thank you, fans. That's a great little video there for Connie's hundredth win. Nice little piece. So I and also I um, all you guys that had uh, had won uh, Nitro Maniac uh, T-shirts, uh, I screwed up. I put everybody's uh, name in the uh, in an email, and it's been sitting in my drafts folder in my uh, email address uh, deal, and I did not send it off to Kevin Stith. So it'll be off on uh, Monday. He'll he should be back like Wednesday or Thursday. I'll send him off to uh, Adam up there in his shop, and we'll get him out to you in the next week or so. And there are also uh, three T-shirts available of the new Isky, uh, the new Isky campfire. I want one. T-shirts. Well, you you get one, but uh, but for three of our fans out there that have watched the show, uh, yeah. send an email to info at nitroreports dot com or contact us uh, through the. Uh, the uh, messenger function on Facebook on our page, and uh, I promise that so I will get it out. So there's three shirts quick. available. There's the, yeah, Kevin always gives it like three. So shirts. our whole viewing audience will get them, <laughs> <laughs> right? Including Joe. It, it, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, the guitar giveaway. Oh yeah, they, uh, yeah. You have to clear that with Bruce before. Yeah, and then also. I just started this week working on the Legends of Nitro funny car calendar and fuel altered calendar for 2019. And if you guys are involved and you know who you are, uh, get off your dead ass and send me your photographs because uh, we're trying to get it all uh, all wrapped up and uh, and get them shipped out in the middle of December so that everybody's got them. And then we will also have a lot of them available in the stiff printing uh, trailer at uh, the Good Vibrations March meet coming up in March. All right. A lot of stuff going on. Hey, remember, get off your dead ass and go to a drag strip this weekend. And definitely get up to Bakersfield, find a hotel room. <laughs> wait, wait, and, well, all right. If you wait until the last week, you know, there's a lot of geezers who will bail. 
and you'll be able to get you know a, a hotel room. But uh, how about get off your dead ass and go to Philippe's Beef Dip? We'll be down there in about a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and uh, thanks to all of our guests. And uh, you know, thanks again to Mendy Fry and and Fast Jack Beckman and uh, our buddies at. Uh, um, Nancy Mayeter and Lyle Greenberg. And Kevin Stiff and Sean Bowen. Again, if you need a driver for the California Hot Rod Reunion. Good driver. He'll be out here. I guarantee you, even if he isn't, uh, if he hasn't got a ride, he'll be out here with his helmet and fire suit. Oh, yeah. And there's just Walking no way around he dressed up. No way that he wouldn't. Right? Yeah. It's like tag team driving. <laughs> be in the staging lanes. Hit me. Hit me. And congratulations to James Mayer on winning the uh, Sifka Championship. It's uh, you know, a tough thing to do, but it's pretty awesome to race with your dad. Yep. Good Vibrations Motorsports. Dragparts.com. You got to support them because they support us. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We will see you on the Tuesday before the California Hot Rod Reunion. I was dumb I didn't look up the date, but, you know, what the Oh, hell. wow, darn. It's, uh, I'll be up there shooting some stuff with, with Bucky and some of the other cars testing, and then I'll edit it together, and we'll have it on that Tuesday night nice and fresh and almost dry. Dar, I'd like to thank somebody. Who's that? Bruce Parker. What? Hey, what? Doing the show, Woke producing it, <laughs> running all the controls by yourself. You do a great job. Mr. We get a Sky. lot of compliments. You and, are uh, uh, you are too kind, sir. We or appreciate it, you. In a band I was once in, the lead singer once in a while would just lean over the stage and he say, "You are you are too kind." <laughs> so, I don't know. It was his thing. Okay, okay. we better get some drums in here yeah. for a cymbal. But um, yeah. yeah, exactly. Anyway, thanks a lot. We'll be back in a month. Take yep. care and uh, send us an email if you want a T-shirt. Take care. Okay, thank you, folks.